Are you ready for it? Because this is about to get real. Real talk by real paranormal investigators. Pretty crazy, right? Can you handle the truth? You can't handle the truth. The American Ghost Hunter Show goes live in three, two, one. Evening and welcome to the American Ghost Hunter Live Show on KCOR Radio. How's everybody doing tonight? Uh, how's my uh, co-host doing? Greg, Helena, Sir Alex. Yeah, I'm doing good. good. I'm good. Yes. <laughs> good, good. I am fine. You're doing good? <laughs> yes, thank you. How so, are uh, you? I'm doing just we great. We never asked you. you. You ask us, but we never ask you. I'm How doing great. You? Things are good. good. I can't complain. Yeah. No, not at all. How's, uh, how's the weather over there in the UK? It's actually not been too bad. Fine. Yeah, she hasn't been too bad. It comes and goes. Yeah. Yeah, like, like every day. But, uh, yep. hey, Greg, Greg, what do you got going on, sir? <clears throat> Um, I mean, not a whole lot. Uh, I mean, I did want to kind of just bring up something to uh, everybody. Uh, I don't know if you guys want to know a little bit more about us, uh, but me and Daryl, uh, we're in a team called Breaking Paranormal. Um, you can check us out at our website, breakingparanormal.com. So it's www.breakingparanormal.com. Um, you can find all of our past uh, YouTube Live American Ghost Hunter episodes from before we started on this show, uh, as well as we also do um, have two of our team episodes that we had made. One was from the House of Wills in Cleveland, and the other one was from uh, the J.C. Thompson building. Uh, so you definitely want to check something out um, with that. Also, uh, we do have T-shirts for sale right now. They're um, like brand new American Ghost Hunter T-shirts for the show. They're actually right now, for every shirt that's purchased, we're actually donating $5 towards the Madison Seminary, uh, which is a, a really nice place. I mean, it's got a great person that owns it. Um, he just needs a lot of help. A lot of stuff's been going out on there, um, and he's trying to save the building. So we're just trying to, you know, help out with that, and we're, you know, donating to help out um, a cause for a great place. Uh, and, you know, like I said, I mean, check us out there. Check us out on our media, uh, Facebook, BreakingParanormal.com, um, or, you know, the Facebook, uh, Breaking Paranormal. also. Yeah, whatever That's really all for what, me. What anybody can do for Adam Kimball, he's the owner from uh, Resident Undead, Please do um, check out the T-shirts. Like I said, like uh, Greg said, every uh, shirt sold five hours goes to Madison Seminary. We're going to keep running with that as long as we can. Um, mm -hmm. But also, Alex, you had something to bring up about uh, Living Paranormal Magazine you wanted to speak about. Uh, yeah, um, tomorrow um, our issue five, which is our Halloween special, um, is being released. Um, it's an online magazine. It's free. Uh, you can either look at it online or download it it's up to you um like I, like I said it is our halloween special it's our biggest issue yet um it's, it's a massive issue it is it's i think 105 pages long um wow. all the other issues have been about 70 to 80 so um we've got stories about annabelle annabelle you know the haunted demon doll thing um a, a, description. a friend of ours i, I i'm I always struggle to say his last name, so I apologise if it's wrong. Sam Barutis, I think. <laughs> I um, don't know. Yeah, well, he's he's uh, basically he knows so much about Salem and the witches and everything that went down there. He's written an article for us. Jack Kenner's written an article for us. Um, we've, there's an article about uh, Gacy, the uh, you know William Gacy, the the killer. Um, we've got top ten horror movies. Uh, as it is Halloween, we've got a story about Hemrychus. We've got the uh, Great British Witch Trials, the future of our technology. There's um, just so much in it. Yeah, we've got a big review on it as well, and I reviewed uh, the latest Walking Dead episode as it's a new season. It is jam packed, and it is amazing. So it, yeah, <laughs> sounds awesome. I can't wait. Um, you haven't let us down so far of the uh, other or um. Paranormal magazine, Living Paranormal magazines that have been coming out for the last almost what eight or nine months now. Uh, it's a great magazine. If uh, anybody interested, go check it out. Oh. It's on Amazon. Oh, I, uh, oh wait, sorry, I, I said William Gacy. It's John Wayne Gacy. I, yeah, so. John Wayne Gacy. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Well, without further ado, I know everybody's been waiting for this. We have an awesome guest tonight. Um, he is the author of Flat Earth Clues. The sky's the uh, the sky's the limit on Amazon. Without further ado, Mark Sargent, how you doing, sir? Hey guys, thanks very much for having me. 
Oh, no problem. Yeah. Uh, we've been checking out, you know, some stuff about you. I've been getting a lot of uh, emails and messages, people telling me to get you on the show. And I, I hit you up and brought you on. And I'm going to be damn honest with you, Mark. I know nothing about Flat Earth. That's okay. Um, I know my co-hosts do. Um, so I know a yeah, bit. They, 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 ed <laughs> they educated me a little bit. Uh, yeah, my parents, uh, they, they're big into it. They've been talking about it a lot. Uh, so, yeah, without further ado, what, I mean, let me, let me get into it, Mark. Right. Um, how did this all come about? I mean, and how is, the whole Flat Earth How thing. is the whole new, the new wave of Flat Earth, the new, the new Flat Earth community, how did it happen? Right. Uh, uh, it's weird because, it, it, yeah, it seemed to all happen at the end of 2014, beginning of 2015, and that's when I got into it. I got, I, I was kind of looking at it the, the summer of 2014, you know, anyone that looks at conspiracies on YouTube, there's a ton of stuff out there. We all know the rabbit holes and I'm not going to go into them. And everybody has heard of the term. I mean, yeah, you may not know anything about flat earth, but you know what the term is. It's, it's that old archaic belief that, that the earth is that's flat and we believed it for a very, very long time. And the 500 years ago, roughly Copernicus came in and, and changed it and, and we're all living on a globe. And I was going, I was, it was seriously out of conspiracy boredom. I got into this and said, all right, fine. I'll just take a look at this thing. I can, I can crush it in probably a weekend. Shouldn't take me that long. I mean, I've gone through conspiracies pretty much since, you know, my first big one was like JFK, the movie in the, in the theater back in the early nineties. And I started looking into it and it turned out to be the worst mistake of my life because it, it was a blessing and a curse really. Because a month after month, I kept hammering on this on this thing, you know, and you and you pull on more threads, and you think you can you can get it, and there's more loose ends show up, and then at the beginning of 2015, I may, I decided to put a series of videos out, which was kind of like a, a a big question to the to the internet hive mind, which was all right, I don't think it's a globe anymore. I can't prove it. If it was a court of law, I couldn't prove the globe anymore. So tell me how I'm wrong. And I made a series called Flat Earth Clues. The introduction was the beginning of February 2015 and uh, did the first seven clues in eight days. And I think I stopped at 11 initially because I didn't know what the response would be. And instead of academics, you know, astrophysics guys and uh, astronomy guys and whoever else, instead of them calling me up saying, OK, here's where you went wrong. You can shut down your YouTube channel now. The exact opposite happened. It started resonating immediately uh, to where people were calling up for interviews all the time uh, subject matter experts were contacting me and then my subscriber rate just kept going up and up and I wasn't even I didn't even have likes and dislikes turned on I didn't have comments turned on for six months I didn't even monetize the channel for the first 15 months until YouTube said yeah you might want to might want to think about that and that is, so here we are now I mean the conference I mean literally here you know you want to know how big it's gotten uh, when I first made the clues in 2015, if you went on YouTube and you typed in flat earth and you sorted by upload date, cause you know, the filters are weird. You may have gotten maybe 50,000 search results. If you do that same thing right now, as we speak, I think it's like 18.9 million, which is, is sort of ridiculous to the point where we have a flat earth conference two weeks from today, literally at the first flat earth conference in the 241 year history of the united states in raleigh north carolina i'm one of the keynote speakers and i'm actually on the first day on the second day i'm hosting the flat earth video award show these things are real things that are actually happening and i, I can i explain it entirely no other than if you want to know if you want to know why it's resonating uh, two quick answers one is because it's the, the the core concept is easy to understand which is you all the world's a stage and you and everyone listening to this are on it uh it's a planetarium it's a terrarium it's a snow globe it's a sports stadium it's a hollywood backlot whatever but it's very very large the core concept is easy to understand once you get that of course you'll have hundreds of questions follow-up questions about the details of how it works the other reason it resonates is because it postulates a brand, well, it, it's something that we've all wondered, which was, you know, if it is flat or if it is a dome enclosed world, then it was created. And if it was created, well, then you're not alone. And that, that really dry, goes, hits home with a lot of people. And it's a positive message compared to most of the conspiracies, which are really, really dark. And I love a dark conspiracy, but this ain't one of them.
Anyway, that's my rant. So, Mark, so Mark um, are we sort of living in like a snow globe matrix kind of thing? Like, yeah. is there a higher power controlling us and watching us? Uh, yeah, yeah, that's exactly what I'm saying. Now, yeah, if you want to go into the matrix side of thing, you know, what's matter and what's molecules and what's energy, eh, I try not to get too far into that because we're... No, we, we, haven't, we haven't got time. <laughs> well, yeah, that, that and we're inside it. So as, if you're inside it, you can talk about the matrix all you want, but until you can get out and look inside, you know, I, I try to live one world at a time, but yeah, that's exactly what I'm talking about. You're in snow globe i think is a little too simple uh, a term but yeah i mean most people know what a snow globe is but i don't think the arc of this the ceiling of this thing isn't that severe i think it's more like a sports stadium because you don't need it to be very very high all you have to do is be very very wide uh and the ceiling doesn't have to be high at all remember commercial air traffic caps out at about 20 miles no, I'm sorry, not even that. I'm sorry, 10 miles. Commercial traffic caps out at 10 miles and spy planes cap it at about 20 miles. And 95% of everyone you know lives from sea level to 5,000 feet, which is only about one mile. So you don't need much of a ceiling to pull this thing off. Yeah, I mean, yeah, I understand what you're, where you're coming from and it, it does make sense. But what evidence do you, I mean, is there is there evidence that you have to, to back up your theory? There is is a lot of evidence that's the weird part i mean i mean when i started out i just did that when you look at the clues I, I know some of you haven't uh it's really a connect the dot type of thing where i initially came in and said okay look a lot of strange stuff started happening in the late 1950s with all the governments of the world that were doing uh cold weather exploration down in antarctica and i can go into some detail about that and that's where that's where the clues initially started which was connecting dots that no one had bothered doing before i mean i i'm not ashamed of saying look i created the, the dummies guide for this you know flat earth i didn't invent flat earth but i did come up with the the dummies guide for it which is a, i said look a lot of really really strange things started happening in antarctica and with the space programs but does that prove a flat earth no it does not there are a lot of points down those lines but and but what got weird was after I made the clues, people started going out and doing their own experiments. And one of them was uh, the visual tests on the water, you know, where where beforehand, you know, a lot of you guys might say, well, you know, we've seen ships go over the horizon. Therefore, we you know, it must be curved. You know, the, the ships must be going over the horizon. And I would have been right there with you up until about 10 years ago when really decent HD camera technology came out with, I mean, like the, not to endorse it, but the, the Coolpix 900 Nikon makes it with like an 83 power zoom. You can watch a ship go over the horizon, supposedly, even though it just, just blurs out. And then you crank the zoom up on this thing, ship comes back. So, and then you can let it go again, you can crank up the zoom even more, and the ship goes back. I've talked to military guys that say that w they can, they're targeting ships at 50 nautical miles away that shouldn't even be possible, sight to sight. They're not bouncing off the stratosphere. And, and what I'm getting here, I know I'm jumping around a little bit, the, you want the proof. Uh, the, the easiest one for people to, to relate to, and it's, this is not hard math, I know it's gonna sound daunting, is the curvature formula for the Earth, which is eight inches times each mile times itself. So if it's three miles, it's eight inches times three times three. So three times three is nine times eight is, is 72. And it gets worse and worse, you know, it gets more and severe as, uh, as you get going. So at 50 miles, which is 50 times 50 times eight, you're pushing about 1700 feet of curvature. Should be 1700 feet on the other side of the hill. If you, you know, you got your camera low enough to the water and we're not seeing it we're not seeing it anywhere we can there are objects in fact i've put the challenge out to people science included where i've said look show me an object at less than i don't know 150 miles away that you can't see that absolutely on a clear day you cannot see i don't care if it's a boat i don't care if it's a lighthouse should not be possible it's just something we've taken for granted for a very very long time you know, hundreds of years in fact to where you know and, and people out there it's like oh no it can't be and your first reaction you guys are listening your first reaction is going this is not true there's no way it can be true and it's like well of course you're going to say that you and your parents and your parents parents going back 25 generations they were shown a toy globe in their in their classroom nobody's been up to space yeah they, they in fact they, that's where it got dicey I, you know up until the 1960s you remember the first picture ever released of the earth from space was in 1972. Do you know when the next picture was taken? The second blue marble shot was taken from space? Two summers ago. 43 years went by and they milked one picture. 
literally one pitcher. And we know this because the White House tweeted it, NASA tweeted it, Neil deGrasse Tyson says, oh yeah, the second blue marble shot from space. It's like, whoa, 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 whoa. What happened to the 43 years of all the stuff you supposedly sent up there? Nobody took a pitcher for 43 years? Come on. Right. It, okay. I, sorry. I'm going to I'm gonna be honest, right? Yeah. Before this, I thought, yeah, none of this is going to actually resonate with me. I'm going to think, yeah, this guy is a nutcase. <laughs> but that actually does make sense. <laughs> why, Which, why hasn't there why hasn't there been any more pictures up until what two years ago that they, that's ridiculous because they if you're in a, in the production value and oh my god i could i could go on forever about some examples um well let, let's take the picture thing and put it off to the side for one second think about the space race you know the space race is is an antique i went down just recently down to houston you know we did a little documentary thing down there at nasa and I'm sitting in front of the only remaining Saturn V rocket, which technically, by car terms, is considered an antique. And you think about the space race where, you know, the Soviet Union and the United States were going back and forth. Who's going to get to the moon? Who's going to get to the moon? And the the Russians were way ahead of the Americans in technology. You know, first man, first dog, first monkey, all these things for years and years and years. And yet the Americans just out of nowhere, boom, 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 we went. And the second we got there, here's where it got weird. The Russians just quit. And I'm thinking, whoa, 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 that's not how space races go. You know how it would go after that. You know, it would be like, okay, we've got three people on the moon. Now I've got four. You know, Russians set up a little house. We set up a little, a bigger house. And then next thing you know, Time Magazine is like, is this the next aspect of the Cold War, you know, on the moon? But that didn't happen. And the reason was, was because production value, from a production standpoint, you could not have two separate entities trying to simultaneously fake the same thing you would never ever i mean we we hell we have a, we have problems now i mean you, you guys have seen you guys have seen movie bloopers there's moviebloopers.com and about 10 different other websites that are exactly the same thing we can't make a movie without making massive massive mistakes uh, and that's just one film house you try to get two it's never ever going to happen um not just the the pictures of the earth from space but how about this there's no picture there's no moving and i don't care what russia today put out we've debunked that in two seconds there is no movie of an astronaut outside of a capsule outside anywhere the moon you know gemini mercury apollo soyuz space shuttles where they actually take the camera let it run and just spin around I would have thought that would have been the first thing you do on the moon and panoramic. You had cameras there, but it never, ever happened. They tried to make it as minimal as possible. When I, and I could, I saw this, oh my God, what year, 2000, 17 years ago. I couldn't see the forest for the trees. I was uh, running a tech support department in Boulder, Colorado, and I wanted to get iconic pictures, different iconic pictures of the earth from space, put them on all the monitors, type in as many Boolean strings as I could think, earth from space, space pictures, blah, blah, blah. And I was only literally getting one picture of the Earth from space, and that was the Apollo 17. And I was trying to figure out what was wrong. I, I couldn't see. I was like, I'm going, NASA, you suck. Why in the world do you have like the world's worst internet presence ever? It's like it's 2000, the internet's up. Why aren't you up there? And it was so bad that the uh, first iPhone, and I'm sorry, I'm rambling really quick. I'm trying to get a lot of info in. Where the first, <laughs> the first iPhone came out in 2004, and there was a guy, I think his name was Chris Simmons. They wanted to do the same thing I, I did. It was like the you know, first iPhone, you know, you have that, that nice little blue marble shot. They didn't know what to do. They weren't going to use the Apollo 17 photo. There were another, uh, no other photos. So they hired a NASA guy to actually come in and create in Photoshop. And, you know, Photoshop was not, you know, it wasn't in, in its infancy, but it wasn't what it is now. Create a brand new blue marble image. And he was interviewed later. And he goes, oh, yeah. I mean, audio. He was interviewed on the radio. And he said, oh, yeah, it was Photoshop, but it had to be. Because we, I had nothing else to work with, and and he, and we know this because not only you know did he save the Photoshop, but he was lazy at the end when he was doing the Southern Hemisphere, he used the cloning tool and just cloned the hell out of the clouds down below, and we spotted it almost immediately. There's just so much stuff out there. Can can I? But to your question, can I prove the flat Earth absolutely 100% right this second? No, of course I can't. If I could, I would be the most famous man in the world. But if it was a court case. I can prove I can throw so much reasonable doubt on the globe now that you'll never 
you'll never look at the globe the same way again. You can't. There's just not enough out there. Uh, just, anyway, sorry. Questions? You, I'm sure you've got them. Your mind's reeling. Some of you are probably drinking. Yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm taking. I'm taking it all in. <laughs> There's a lot of weird. So, okay, let me let me throw another one at you, another wrinkle. Okay, forget about the space program just for a second. You want to know the one of the weirdest things on the ground level? Because you're going. I'm not going to space. I'm not going to be able to prove any of this. You want to know the weirdest thing on the ground level? Is um, uh, Antarctica. Antarctica is the weirdest uh, continent that there is. Meaning. Uh, there was a, an admiral, the, the youngest admiral in the history of the United States Navy, Admiral Richard Byrd. You can go look him up, Admiral, on YouTube. He's got a couple clips on, on YouTube, which are brilliant. He goes and spends, he, he was the first guy to cross the North Pole in 1926. And then 1928, the United States government commissioned him, for whatever reason, to go to Antarctica and find whatever it was. And he just flew around in planes, ever better, every year, every year from 1928 up almost to, to his death in 1957. And in 1956, he went on his last mission, which was Operation Deep Freeze. And after that mission was over, all the countries that were down there, we're talking all the major players, the Soviet Union, Great Britain, Argentina, Chile, Australia, uh, United States, they all got off the ice as fast as humanly possible. And in place of them was the uh, Antarctic Treaty which was ratified in 1959, which says that, oh yeah, as a tourist, you can go down there. You want to spend 10 grand, go down there, you can. As a corporation, you can never go down there ever, ever, ever for no matter how much money. It is beyond money, whatever's happening down there. Meaning if you have an oil and gas company, which has deep, deep pockets, like if I own an oil and gas company, I could frack in your backyard tomorrow if I wanted to. It's only a question of who I have to bribe. These companies are not allowed. No corporation is allowed to go down and set up shop in Antarctica ever. It's not even up for review until uh, 2041. To, there's no other continent and it, it's it, nobody owns antarctica find me a piece of real estate on this planet world whatever you want to call it that nobody owns antarctica millions and millions of square miles nobody owns it and it's locked down tight again you can go down there have pictures taken with penguins and i'm so not you, even allowed, you're not even allowed to talk about it i know so you do, you do you think this is like where it, it it's, it's supposedly dry. Well, yes, all right, right, all right, all right. We'll save <laughs> okay, that one. Okay. Right. So after <laughs> yeah. Alex, after Alex does his bit, I want you to start asking some questions, Greg. All right. Yeah. Because I mean, I I have like a like I literally started typing on the computer trying to like look at pictures and and like try to find stuff and like because I'm just like blown yeah, away. Like wait. Oh a yeah, second. yeah. Every, that's, that's how it why starts. Amelia, Amelia Earhart never made it around the world. Yeah, yeah, Amelia. Well, it's also because she was a girl. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> oh. 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 Greg, Greg, you, Greg, you, Greg, you seem to be breaking up on my end a little bit. We, we might have to call you back. <laughs> hey, I had to throw something out there. Wow. I got nothing else. Wow. Actually, there's wow. a lot of celebrity. There's a lot of celebrities who have jumped on this Next flat Earth thing. as well. Yeah, yeah. It's uh, it's what was weird. I mean, I was literally watching. Oh God, what was it? Um, Dave Chappelle talking, no, it was a Rolling Stone article about Dave Ch Chappelle talking to Jimmy Kimmel about Kyrie Irving talking about Flat Earth. It was one of the most surreal things I've ever seen in my life. That's, where... like, that's like an Inception article. It's yeah. so-and-so talking about so-and-so talking about so-and-so. Oh, yeah, yeah. I, I, uh, <laughs> and I knew exactly where they were going with this because I knew all the characters b going back and... Yeah, it's been a bizarre, bizarre year. I mean, it started with um, B.O.B. last year, beginning of last year, calling out Neil deGrasse Tyson. He made a song as one of his albums uh, called Flatline. And he used like a 60-second clip of Neil deGrasse Tyson, yeah. basically just ripping him. <laughs> and Neil deGrasse, Neil deGrasse Tyson comes out on Comedy Central trying to explain Flat Earth to B.O.B., you know, even though B.O.B. wasn't there. And, you know, dropping the mic and, you know, it just gets weirder and weirder. But yeah, yeah. I mean, the, the conference, we've got, I, I, heck, Howard Stern's team just confirmed the conference two days ago. It's wow. absolutely bizarre. All right. That... Well, we're going to be coming back here, Mark, in about 30 seconds. And we're okay, going to um, we're gonna send the audio down and Daryl's going to send it to Alex's Amazing Facts. Um, Alex will do his quick Amazing Facts and then we okay. get Greg back into answering some questions and, and okay. asking you some questions and stuff cool. like that. Okay. I've got questions too. Okay. <laughs> and then are we, are we done at the top of the hour? Yeah, done at the okay. top of the hour. Yep. Cool. Sounds good. Yep. So when we get down, you'll see it go five, four, three, two, one, and we get to one. That's when they're basically going to send it right out to the close of the show. Okay. okay. I'll mute All right, going to send the audio down, guys. Hold on. 
Amazon.com or get a signed copy at TinaMarieEntertainment.com. Get your copy now. That's good. 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 This kind of back talk is totally unacceptable. Real stories, real experiences. We call it the American Ghost Hunter Show. And we know you're going to love it. Real discussions into the world of the paranormal. You ready now? Welcome back to the American Ghost Hunter Show. To be on the show live, call 702 725-9230. That's 702-425-9230. Give us a call now. Worldwide callers use Skype name KCOR Radio. Share your thoughts of the show on Twitter with hashtag KCOR or hang out in our live chat room at KCORradio.com. Everything we've ever done has led to this. Now... Back into the world of the strange and unusual with your hosts, Daryl Marston, Greg Nepp, Helena, and Alex King. Hello, welcome back to the American Ghost Hunter Live show, and we're back with Alex King's useless knowledge. We call it... This is Alex's Amazing Facts. And we know you're going to love it. Uh... You ready now? Hello. I hope you're enjoying the music. Um, okay. It is in England, in Britain, it is illegal to handle a salmon in a suspicious manner. Ta da! <laughs> I get dumber every week oh, after man. your damn thing. No kidding. But the thing is, it, it, this, this, and this is a true, this is true in um, 1986 under the Salmon Act. What? That's a law. The salmon act. In 1986, they made it illegal to handle a salmon in suspicious circumstances. Um, <laughs> but they were so they weren't. What, what they do they consider a suspicious? Clear. Like they act. weren't partic- they weren't particularly clear on that. They didn't elaborate on it. So, I mean, so any suspicious play, playing, act with playing, a salmon. Playing, playing air guitar with a salmon. Um, I don't know, swinging it around your head. I really want to see someone play air guitar with a salmon. Using it. Spanking um, your salmon. You know. Spanking your salmon. Kissing the salmon. Stroking it, you're, caressing it, loving you're all it. You're alright, Greg, because it's only illegal in the UK to caress a salmon. Yeah, so, so you, you, you can continue yeah. doing what you do with salmons. So it's legal all right. in the United States. Well, we're good. Well, it all might right. be. I don't know. Uh, we'll um, oh, and, and, and may I quickly add, um, I didn't mention it earlier, but to... Uh, Download Living Paranormal Magazine. Visit livingparanormalmagazine.com. Okay. I forgot to mention it. Yeah. All righty. That I mean that that would be useful. That's but... good. Well, I, well, I know Greg has some <laughs> questions for Mark. So, Greg, what do you got, sir? All right, all right. So, I mean, like uh, the whole the whole first half, like I said, I was just I was just listening, uh, and I personally knew absolutely nothing about this. I like to actually, for most of the time when the guest comes on, I like to not really know exactly what they're into or what their thoughts are on stuff. Just like last week, I didn't know anything really. Uh, so basically, I like to go in. Yeah, well, it's pretty much every day, I guess, in my and life. The for that, he, 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 thought for Mark that. Sar- he thought Mark Sargent was a soldier because he's not yeah 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 that's, that's exactly what it was. Uh, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but anyway, um, no, like I, you know, I for like I didn't, I didn't know anything about this. So when I was listening, like I, I was sitting here just staring at my computer screen, and I started thinking, okay, I kind of want to see what pictures are that they have, or what they, you know, think that it is, or whatever. Um, so anyway, I, I had a question, and I'm sure this is like one of the first questions you're always asked. Yeah. But if that they. Th- if this theory is true, right. how do people sail around the world to where they literally can start in one spe- section and go around the world back into that same section? Good. No, no. That is one of the top 10 questions that, that's always asked. Um, and, and first off, I got to give you kind of a visual for people who are out there going, what the hell does this thing look like? All right. You want to know what it looks like? Uh, the easiest way is just to type in the UN flag. That's that's the easiest one to look at uh, because the UN flag is literally identical to most of the flat earth community maps with the exception being that the one thing that's missing on the UN flag is Antarctica. Uh, Insert spooky music here. 
But the, you could also, the formal name of that map is the Azimuthal Equi Equidistant Map, which is A-Z-I-M-U-T-H-A-L Equidistant, right? So if you have that map on your screen, and what we're basically saying is that the world is a dinner plate, right? The North Pole is at the center of this plate. And if you were sailing around it, literally, you can you know, run your finger in a circle around the dinner plate. The compass works the same way, meaning the compass is still the north, the magnetic north. There is no, in fact, all the other continents look pretty much the same uh, that they that they would on a globe, with the exception of Antarctica. Antarctica is right out. There's Antarctica is, is not this island continent that's about the same size as Australia. It is literally. A massive, massive, it's, it's an unusual continent, even how mainstream describes it. But it's this massive continent that sits on the out, outer edge, uh, surrounds you on all sides. It's this giant, it's the, it's the outer edge of that plate. And it goes on for a long, long, long distance. Uh, Antarctica has a coastline, real quick, and I know you got more questions. Uh, goes from <laughs> sea level to like 200 feet straight up uh, uh, of ice. You know, you, you see all seen the pictures. It's not like Game of Thrones ice wall, but it's pretty damn high. And then from there, it goes up way higher than Games of Thrones. It goes up, the, the entire, most of the continent is about 14,000 feet in altitude. You know, remember altitude sickness kicks in at about 7,000. That's about half that. Well, let me stop you first. Go ahead, go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. Greg, Games of Thrones. Game of Thrones is a TV show. Just to let you know. Yeah, yeah, I know, I know what it is. I, well, uh, never never uh, watched it. So, never so, watched it. Was, it. Holy so, smokes, it he's never first. watched Game of Thrones. <laughs> never watched. I, I, I was always a diehard Walking Dead person, and everybody talked about how great Game of Thrones was, and I was like, no, no, I can't even do it. But I, I on a real quick side note, uh, that was the same way with like CSI. Everybody used to talk about how great CSI was, and I was like, I'm not watching that. That's the stupidest thing I've ever heard of in my life, and now I'm addicted to it. So, mm. yeah. Watch Game of Thrones, there's a load of boobs in it. Yeah, I don't yeah. care about boobs. <laughs> so, so I've heard. I mean, be honest, I tell people I watch it, but I don't actually watch it. <laughs> Yeah. Well, it's almost it, over. They they have like I mean, eight it's, eight episodes it's next year. It's too far in for me to get into it now. It would take me like a year just to catch up. Yeah, there's right, a, right. a lot of back content. But anyway, now. this isn't this this isn't Game of Thrones fan. All right. Form. Anyway, sorry. So that that kind of, <laughs> so anyway, the the point is if you move if you move your finger around any circular object, be it a dinner plate, a dining room table, whatever it is, I can't say roulette table anymore because the conspiracy crowd said, you know that all the roulette table numbers, if you add them up, it adds up to six hundred sixty six. It's true, so I can't say that anymore. But anyway, if you move your <laughs> finger around a dinner plate, does that make your dinner plate a sphere, a ball, a globe? No, it doesn't. There you so go. So all compasses don't, like, technically, when they point north, they're pointing to the center of the dinner plate. They're pointing to the center of the dinner plate. And what's weirder is, and I've talked to Australian military, from everything I have done research on, there is no southern magnetic force. Meaning, you know, it's, a, it's what the age-old question, of course, we all live in the Northern Hemisphere, so we don't have to deal with it. The, the, the age-old question is, how far south do you have to go before the South Pole takes over that compass and flips it, right? Well, Mark, how, yeah. how, how would all our governments get together and actually hide this from us? Oh, that's the best part. This I'll tell you thing, what, why, why would they hide it from us? Okay, the, the big... the benefits of us thinking we live on a spear? Right. Think of it this way. The powers that be, they like stability, kind of, you know, orchestrated chaos. They like to at least control, you know, I, I know wars oh, and yeah, all no, that. They love to control us. Yeah, they can love to control us. Something like this has the potential, albeit maybe a small percentage, but they're not going to take that chance. Think of what would happen overnight. And I, I talked about this in the clues. Three things would happen. Uh, one would be academics. Literally, tomorrow, uh, astronomy, every astronomy program and every astrophysics program and every university in every country they close their doors forever all the remaining physical sciences geology hydrology biology archaeology anything with anology next to it they have to retool literally from the ground up no play on words the, that's the academic side i mean literally just gets turned upside down economically oh my god i mean you know i mean uh, trump could catch uh, pneumonia tomorrow and the market would plummet you know that's how fragile the markets are even though i think they're controlled but you'd have to close the world markets for at least a month because economically you don't know what all this means. You don't know where everything would have to move. Uh, and part of that is tied to the third and probably the most important part, which is the spiritual side. And that is if this place was created, if we are talking about a dome structure, a Hollywood backlight, I mean, we're talking about, you're, we're living in a building. 
then what does that mean as far as the major religions are concerned? What does that mean about spirituality? Uh, you know, are we are we talking about the handprint of God out there? And if we are, then what what what? what how do the five major religions, you know, Judaism, Hinduism, Buddhism, Islam, and Christianity, how do they react to this? The potential for instability is so huge. That smoking man, you know, long table with no lights and everybody's sitting there, that, that meeting lasts about 10 minutes where they say, you know what, eh, we're going to hold on to this for a while until we can figure out how we can best use it to our advantage. And now they know full well that they couldn't hold on to it forever. The technology was going to catch up with them. They could stunt it all they want. I mean, the reason, one of the reasons we don't have the Jetsons cars and unified field engines and stuff like that, you know, that would, that would ruin it. Uh, but once they, they could only hide it so long, it's kind of like hiding a pack of cigarettes from your roommates, right? You, you can shuffle it around here and there, but sooner or later, they're going to find it. And 60 years seems to be where they've run out of time. Well, my, my question with that though, is like, mm -hmm. all right. So if you're saying that, that they're kind of like hiding it, why, because I mean, I, I get, I get what you're saying. Cause I mean, pretty much anything in this day and age, if it's something that's like a, uh, a big life-changing event or something all of a sudden the world just stops what they're doing and everything falls apart I get right, that right. but if they knew it back then yes why would they hide it back then when that it, it wouldn't have mattered per se you know what because... I mean like, like nowadays everything is so frantic but back then I mean it was like yeah, whatever. P potentially, it okay. The the big reason why you hide it back then, and you're right. That's actually good. I haven't gotten that one before. the The big reason why you hide it back then is the institution was already too far along, meaning the narrative was too far along. Uh, an example would be the Catholic Church. If all of a sudden the Catholic Church found a papyrus scroll that said the Virgin Mary's name was Susan. Would they tell people, no, no, they're not going to tell them. That story is way too far along. They are not going right. to rewrite all that stuff. Imagine that from a field of science. You've been telling people it was a globe for 25 generations. That's a long, long time. And in those 25 generations, you have built up all those ologies I talked about. All of a sudden, you're asking those people, you know, you're asking all those major scientific institutions to get ready for a beatdown. Because their credibility, it's like, okay, so you were wrong about something really, really big. What else are you wrong about? How about like that Big Bang thing or evolution or basically religion? And I talked about this in the clues. Religion had would have a huge responsibility to not try to exact revenge on science. I, so the short answer is science as an institution is too far along to, to do it. They have... They, they couldn't control the information fast enough. They had to wait until now, basically, with high-speed internet and social media to where at least they can get, you know, the criminal thing. You gotta get your story straight. Look look at the panic that happened during the Roswell thing when the newspapers got a hold of that story, even if it was only briefly for a couple days. People were freaking out. And that was just a stupid spaceship. You know, this, right, is, right. this is the Hel shape of Helena. the world. Yes. What was your question, hon? Um, my question is, if the Earth's flat, Right, and and we have lunar eclipses. Right. How does that happen? Is, oh, is no, the, no, it's good. Is the dinner plate turning on its side? To come no, 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 no. It's it's. There are two two schools of thought. One is is the dinner plate with a dome over it. Uh, you know, a, 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 again, a sports stadium. And I know it dates me when I say I've been to a planetarium. If you guys haven't been to planetariums, they're basically just sports stadiums, but all the seats, uh, you know, lay you on your back so you can stare up at the ceiling. Um, what you're looking at is really no different than a display system. We can do, we've been able to do this uh, in planetariums, you know, at least the nighttime stuff. Oh God, since the seventies, you know, back then when you can, I mean, you can do the stars, you can do the moon, you can do comets and stuff. Heck on the weekends, you could put anything you want. They did what laser Floyd and laser Led Zeppelin back in the day in planetariums. Imagine that, but with a much, much better technology. And that's what we're talking about here, where the sun and the moon are tiny, Tiny, but, tiny objects. That but, was probably okay. So another another question. Yes. Is uh, and this is like something for me. We've got a couple of comments that we're going. Oh yeah, this, this is the there's, first time we've had people listening comment. There, there's, there's, there's <laughs> oh, this going on. this will set people off. Just so you know, this is <laughs> extremely <laughs> polarizing. We'll be gentle with the tweeting. <laughs> oh no, it's okay. Yeah. I don't mind. Um, uh, well, my last question, really, before we get into the comments, is uh, yeah. if the Earth is flat. Right. Explain gravity. Gravity. Perfect. How do you explain gravity on a globe? And that's not me trying to be a smartass. Meaning, 
what is gravity? It, Neil deGrasse Tyson said it best. And, and this is, you know, the, the spokesman for science. He said that we can't even tell you what gravity is. We can only tell you the symptoms of gravity. We can tell you what it does. You know, uh, these are things you can test. Like, you know, water, water's wet, fire burns. You drop something, it goes to the floor. Something's either pushing or pulling that thing down. Same thing applies in a flat world. Uh, whatever force is being used here, it's, I consider it a molecular magnetism, you know, but, but isn't that uh, just another name for gravity? Gravity pretty much works the same way on a flat world as it does a spherical world. Except with the exception is in a spherical world, they say it pulls towards the center. Flat world, it's just pulling it straight down. Mm. I mean, I've, we, we had a, we had a comment from uh, Tyler from Texas. Um, mm -hmm. I mean, I, I think you basically answered his question because he was he, he asked um, why are there videos from telescopes showing the moon, planets, and stars? Oh no, no, no! I no. Around. Let me let me answer that one real quick. And that is because I I love people like amateur astronomers that'll say, oh, I've seen you know the the Jupiter's moons or the rings from Saturn. I'm going fine. Take a pair of binoculars, go to a planetarium, and look at Jupiter. Does it look more or less real with your binoculars? And your, your statement is like, well, it doesn't matter because I'm in a planetarium. I'm going, that's my point. Who's to say when you walk out of that building, you're just not in a much bigger building? We also have another tweet from Ryan. Uh, Ryan asked, uh, "How do so if, if the Earth isn't round, how do satellites circle the Earth? <laughs> I love that one. And this is going to piss him off. I'm sorry. Who told you there were satellites in the first place? Uh, the same guys that told you the Americans went to the moon? Those guys? NASA? Because they were founded the in... The government. <laughs> yeah, the, the government. I mean, you know, NASA, NASA was founded in 1958. Literally, you know, within uh, 12 months after the Antarctic missions were started. And literally in the first year, they... Oh, jeez, there's so many different ways I could go with. Look up, look up all the high-altitude atomic tests that were done from 1958 to 1952, where they, the United States and Soviet Union were just firing with missiles straight up for four years straight, like they were trying to break through something. Satellites, are there something up there? Yes, there is. You absolutely believe there, there's something up there. You can see them with your naked eye. And if you have night vision binoculars, which I highly recommend to people, you can see a lot more. There's a lot of stuff flying up there. And I got to look, I'm telling you, it ain't us. There's too many things. I have seen way too many things with just basic $400 night vision binoculars. You can buy them on Amazon. So how, so how do I get um, my satellite TV to work? Ground cable. But, oh, with the exception of if you have dishes that are pointing at something, th oh, geez, how many different ways could we do this? Uh, if there are satellites, if you if your dish is actually pointing off of something, and even sat I, like I've had satellite people tell me it's like, look, the satellites do not have the bandwidth to be pumping everything that people think that that that's sending the data down. Most of the uh, most of the data you're getting is from ground stuff, uh, the under underwater cables, underground cables, tower to tower. But yeah, to, be, to be honest, I realized that as I asked the question. <laughs> oh, okay. But but it's okay. I mean, it, it thought, you know, I thought, it's actually no. It it goes to it. It obviously it's not pointing in like in this into space. It's pointing to a to a, a low, yeah, a low, low, a low trajectory. <laughs> but again, it happens. In another one of the clues, they said you want to have some fun. Look up the GPS system. F find any flight, and this is public information. None of this stuff is secret. You can look it all up. Um, try to track a flight in the southern hemisphere as it goes uh, from the ocean from anywhere in South America to anywhere in Africa to anywhere in Australia. Once it gets about 150 miles offshore, it disappears. It blinks off the screen. And if it doesn't blink off the screen, the latitude and longitude will disappear and it'll change to approximated or estimated mode. And it'll stay that way until it's about 150 miles within a land mass you know, that, ha that is big enough to have a ground tower. And that, and that is one of the weirdest things to, to watch. And you can do this all day long where you know, these flights just disappear. You want to know why the Malaysian flights disappeared? Or they can, couldn't find a 777 flagship state-of-the-art aircraft? It's because they couldn't track it. The, the GPS system, which is DOD, you know, United States Department of Defense, developed in the 1990s, supposedly blanket coverage, multiple blankets of 32 satellites, has huge gaps, huge gaps in it. And they don't talk about it. It has been one of those things where they just, if they don't talk about it, they were hoping that people would miss it. And they, they've stopped missing it about two years ago. Let me ask you a question real quick, Mark. So if this is, a, like you, you explained, a giant like snow globe sure. that we're in, yeah. uh, who is it? Someone you shake it when it snows. Yeah. <laughs> is that the earthquake? Who, no, no. no you, you're, I know what your Someone question is. Who, who made it? 
right? Who, who made it? Who's watching us and why? Who, made it, who watched it? Okay, at the very least, and I, again, I don't want to go down this, but I don't know what kind of show this is. I, I don't want to... I don't want to quote chapter and verse here, even though there's a lot of chapter and verse hey, we, people. We, we, don't, we don't hold back. So, All right. Uh, that's, no, it's fine. Uh, it's either it's one of two things. It's either at a severely advanced technology, uh, way, you know, octaves, you know, exponentially higher than us that's controlling this thing. Or, you know, but at the same time, what's the difference between a very, very high technology and the handprint of God? You know, am I saying, it, it, you know, it's proof of intelligent design or it's divine intervention? Not exactly, but at the very least, it's one step closer. So that's, you know, that's what it is. But it's not us. I, that I can absolutely tell you. It is not us. We did not build this. We had nothing to do with it. Even the older civilizations before us, I think the remnants of them are still around here with us. But they didn't build it either. It's kind of like that contact line, that spooky contact line where he goes, he goes, we didn't build it. We don't know who did. <laughs> So, so real, real quick before before we end the show, yeah. My my other question is, so if the world is flat, yeah, how does the water not fall off the edge? What the Antar- is on the edges that's holding this water in? The severely elevated Antarctic coastline. The Antarctic coastline goes literally straight up at least two hundred feet, and then from there, it it the whole Antarctic coastline coincidentally goes up to about one two miles, two two and a half miles up. The, the water's well, what about go- the sides, though, that are super hot? The sides that are super hot. Like, if, it, if it's like a square, the sides obviously would be like where the sun would go around, you know, like on the... Oh, 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 oh. No, the, the sun's too small. The sun, sun's too small to, to melt anything along those lines. Uh, it's, it's, it's regional. It's a, the, the sun, on top of probably being you know, a directional light source, is so small that most of the... You know, when you talk about the heat sources, and again, I talked about it in the clues real quick, um, the the sun is not the 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 only source of heat when it comes to this system. Uh, the jet stream uh, g- circulates a huge amount of energy. The underwater conveyor system even circulates more en- energy. And then the magma system below that. And I know people disagree with me and say, "Oh no, that that that's got to be organic." I'll go, "Why? Well, if it's built, why would you leave anything to chance?" You know, you, you have a terrarium for your pet lizard. Nothing in that terrarium is going to be organic, including the magma system. So mm-hmm. what you're saying, this is pretty much just a big mechanical machine that we're all living on. Yep. Yep. That's exactly where but you that, are. You are you are in a controlled environment. Absolutely. So, so are all the other planets flat or is it just that one? I think you, it's I just, think you it, said that earlier there. Like a no, no, it, it's okay. They're the, the, the planets that you see... They look spherical, but it's just like in a. They look spherical in a planetarium too. They're just lights. That's all they are. They're just projections, either rear projection or front projection on the roof of this place. So I've, I've, I've got, I've got, I've, so sorry, I've got, fake. I've got to say something quickly. Uh, Tina, um, our producer, just put a uh, message. Um, it's not the Trump show. It's the Truman Show. The, uh, that's good. That's good. Yeah, the Truman Show. By the way, that's a great reference. Truman Show was probably the finest example of what we're talking about. I love, tr- that. I love that film. Truman Show, 19, 1998, Jim Carrey, where they Hollywood built a, a literally a giant soundstage that was twenty miles wide and yeah. raised a child inside it, and he never knew because they controlled the skies and they controlled his environment entirely. And if it wasn't for the production mistakes, he would have never found out, and there would never would have been a movie. I mean, we've not got long left, so I'm going to ask a quick question. Yeah. Go. Um, I mean, it's, it's nothing about your theories. I'm just wondering, like, when you talk to people about this, have you ever got any sort of serious abuse from it? No, 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 no. I mean, people, I mean, they don't, people they don't be quite hate, polite about it. Well, they don't hate, no, no, there's people who get really rude, but it's mostly because, no, they don't hate me. They don't hate the, the messenger. They hate the message. I've I've not I've never gotten any death threats or anything like that. You know, it's it's people. It's it's mind blowing. It's like telling somebody. I know we're, the show's wrapping up really quick. You want to know why people? It's so polarizing. It's like walking up to any one of you and see me saying, "Hey, you know what? I think you're adopted." And you're going, "Whatever, I'm not adopted." And then I keep piling on with more and more things, and it doesn't matter to you until you flip, and then all of a sudden, wait a minute, wait, maybe I am adopted. And then once you start thinking about that, you start reevaluating every single conversation you had with since you were six years old. That's what we're talking about here. So, Mark, I want to thank you. Uh, is anything you want to plug real quick? Uh, just no, no. Just type in Flat Earth Clues into Google. You will find me. Awesome. And he has his own, he has his own YouTube as well. 
<laughs> yeah, yeah, but oh, you'll yeah. find it. You'll oh, find yeah, it. You're on YouTube. Okay. Oh God, yes. <laughs> I didn't know that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he's got but forty thousand any, followers. But anyway, guys, uh, yeah, everybody have a safe Halloween. Uh, great talking to you, Mark. Um, also, next week, stay tuned for Nova Spies, good friends of ours. I can't wait oh, to have sister one. Team. Yep, sister oh, team. Join sister team. Absolutely, good people. Can't wait to have them on. And Mark, dude, you've been a scholar and a gentleman. I appreciate it. Thanks, Thank guys. You. Thanks very much for having me. You're welcome. And good night to everyone. Okay, guys, we're clear. Great show, Mark. Real great cool, stuff. Thanks. I got. I got. I'll contact you about coming on my show sometime in like end of uh, November, beginning of December, or something like that. Great oh, ha happy to do it. And and unfortunately, I'd love to stay and chat some more. I know you guys probably. Have I got to... another show. I've got to get to. Here uh, so do I. Anyway. <laughs> I got to jump to another show in like two minutes. All right. Thanks, Mark. All right. Thanks, bye, guys. Bye. Thank bye. You, bye.